Stepping up to the couch, it's Brian, who led the league last season in cracked screens. But with his new athletic case, it looks like that won't be the case. <laughs> Touchdown, Brian! Before we get into this video, I'd like to quickly ask that if you are a fan of the channel, could you please do me a favor and follow me on Twitter? I am very close to hitting a thousand followers. I do tweet way too often, but it's a good place to keep up with the videos that will be coming out. And I also tweet about basketball and, well, my shitty life. So go follow me at RustyBuckets321. Link will be in the description and in my pinned comment. And if you're new here, please be sure to subscribe. I would love to hit 30k by the end of the year, but that more than likely won't be happening, but I can still try. With that out of the way, onto the video. There have been so many talented players in NBA history that some have gone overlooked. Even in the current NBA, the league is so damn talented that Derrick Rose's unbelievable comeback season still won't get him close to being an all-star. Blake Griffin is averaging 25, 9-5 on solid efficiency, and he will be lucky to scratch the All-NBA third team. This is just right now. Throughout history, guys have been overlooked due to the time that they played. Chris Webber playing in the same era as KG, Tim Duncan, and Dirk, he got completely overlooked despite averaging 20-10 and 10 for his career and having many seasons of 25-10. and 10. Alex English and Adrian Dantley are also some forgotten legends. A lot of that has to do with the lack of winning in their careers. But even then, they still get overlooked in favor of other players that didn't win either, like Vince Carter or Tracy McGrady. But the other day, I discovered who I think to be the most overlooked player in NBA history. While I was working on Wilt Chamberlain's section of the Goatmentary, when I looked up the NBA's all-time scoring list, I scrolled down the list to find where Wilt was ranked all-time in scoring. But after I found that number, I scrolled down a little bit more and saw that L Elvin Hayes was at the 10th spot. Elvin Hayes is 10th all-time in scoring in the NBA. He scored 27,313 points in his 16 seasons in the NBA. He was a 12-time All-Star, a 6-time All-NBA performer, a 2-time All-Defensive player. He was the 1969 scoring champion, and he won a championship in 1978, where he kind of unfairly wasn't given finals MVP. It was given to Wes Unseld, who averaged 9 points, 12 rebounds, and 4 assists, in comparison to Elvin's 21 points, 12 rebounds, 1.5 assists, and 2 blocks. Elvin was a 6'9 power forward who was very athletic and had an amazing post game, a great mid-range game, and he was known for his fadeaway jumper. He was also a tenacious rebounder, hence being fourth all-time, and a great defensive player. And he played for the Washington Bullets, where they contended for a few seasons and won the 78 finals versus the Sonics. He also played for the San Diego, which eventually became Houston Rockets. The most impressive thing about Hayes, and I do mean more impressive than his scoring and rebounding, was Elvin's durability. He played no less than 80 games every season for his 16-season career. He played 8 full seasons of 82 games, 7 seasons with 81 games played, and 1 with just a measly 80 games. To put that into comparison, LeBron James is the name who most people would say when asked who the most durable player in NBA history is, but LeBron, who is in his 16th season right now, has played 1,169 games. Hayes played 1,303 games in his career. Even if LeBron played every game of this season, Season, which is 55 games, he would still be nearly a full season of games behind Hayes. LeBron with 1,224 career games, Hayes with 1,303, a 79-game difference. Now, why was Hayes overlooked? Well, you can't say it was because of winning, like Chris Webber or Adrian Dantley. He won a ring, even if it's just one. There are guys like VC and McGrady who won nothing and are more well known. I think it would have to be the era that he played in. Not only that it was the 70s and 80s, which is more forgotten in the modern day, but he also had a career that started with Kareem Abdul-Jabbar dominating the league. And then when Kareem's reign started to come to a close, Magic Johnson and Larry Bird were now on top. 
and that was deserving. They were definitely better players. But I feel like Hayes got overlooked because of their success. And another problem with Hayes that got him so overlooked was that, well, he was boring. Nothing about Hayes was flashy. Even though he was athletic, he wasn't throwing down crazy dunks. Not pulling off any flashy moves, he was a fundamental post player. He basically had Tim Duncan syndrome. And that's Elvin Hayes. Since I'm working on the goat materi, this was just a quick little video. Expect a few more like these until I'm done. I'm about 50% done with the goat materi, but I'm making great progress, so that second 50% shouldn't take nearly as long as the first one did, I promise. That's the end of this video. Please be sure to like and subscribe for more NBA content like this, and cue the outro.